effort hasn't dampened the spirit of Ole Miss fans on the Grove as they get ready for a huge home game against Georgia. Lane Kiffin looking for the biggest win of his five-year tenure as head coach of the Rebels. His team arrives with momentum. Jackson Dart set school records for total offense and passing yards in their route of the Hogs at Arkansas last weekend. Kirby Smart brings the Dogs to Oxford for the first time since 2016. They arrive winners of 52 straight against teams not named Alabama. They're 7-1 and one this year, the only blemish to the Tide, despite the fact that Carson Beck has struggled. 11 interceptions in his last five games, and today he faces a Rebel defense that leads the nation in sacks. You're watching the SEC on ABC, presented by Burger King. They welcome everyone to the Bud Light kickoff. The Georgia Bulldogs, number three in the first college football playoff rankings that came out earlier this week against the Ole Miss Rebels, number 16. Old friends, we knew their acquaintances. Kirby Smart and Lane Kiffin were coordinators together at Alabama. You're watching the Bud Light kickoff from Oxford, Mississippi. The clock is ticking. Every game is a must win for Ole Miss. Can Carson Beck get back on track? This is the biggest game in the history of Oxford, Mississippi. In the Grove, set the tempo and make your mark. This offense has been wicked. Touchdown, Georgia. I've always been this idiot. I'm going to bring that. Time to step up or get stepped over. I don't want out. It's another option. Take a look at the Bud Light kickoff spotlight. This rivalry dates back to 1940. Georgia, big edge all time, including lately. They won 11 of the last 12, but the one loss in that span was the last time they were here in Kirby Smart's first season as head coach. They arrived here 3-0, and and they lost 45-14, to which is still the biggest defeat for Georgia under Kirby Smart. He and the Dogs now taking the field. In his ninth season as head coach, Ole Miss taking the field. Looking for just the second win in school history against a team ranked in the AP Top 2. It would be the highest ranked opponent that Lane Kiffin has defeated in his 13 seasons as a head coach. It started raining here overnight, rain much of the morning, tapered off for a while. But it has intensified in the last half hour or so. Natural grass field, it's in good shape. Do you think the rain's a factor either way? One thing Lane said yesterday when we visited with him, he's a little bit concerned about his pass rush and the top sack team in the country because they really do rely on speed primarily with those pass rushing specialists. Absolutely. I've always thought too that rain games and a wet track favors the offense because you know where you're going. The defense has to react and they oftentimes don't have their feet underneath them all the time. So offense I think would be favored in a situation like this. Not much breeze to speak of as Peyton Woodring gets ready to kick it off for Georgia. Micah Davis is the deepest back for Ole Miss. Carson Beck hoping for a performance that will change the trajectory of his season individually. Woodring, one of the best kickers in the country, boots a touchback. So here comes Ole Miss on offense led by Jackson Dart, who leads the nation in total offense. He's fifth in completion percentage in his 3,210 passing yards. Number one in the country entering this weekend. Third year starter, senior from Kaysville, Utah. And coaches on both sides, Greg said, when he's accurate, he's tremendous, but sometimes a little scattershot. A little bit, but the downfield stuff really picked up last week, so trying to pick up where he left off against Arkansas. Even without Harris, they think they have one of the best wide receiver groups in the country. Jordan Watkins had five touchdown catches last week. 
Juice Wells went in motion. Jackson Dark's an excellent runner. And he gets yanked down by Nazir Stackhouse after a one-yard gain. Matter of fact, Kirby Smart said Jackson Dart runs like an SEC running back. He's big and physical, not crazy breakaway speed, but very crafty. And his legs will be a factor today to slow down that pass rush. They like to go very quickly. And he's in trouble. Chaz Chambliss has him wrapped up and down he goes. Back in the 19-yard line. Kristen Miller there as well for Georgia to help finish him off. It's a loss of six. What a great pass rush by Georgia. And these are the downs that Ole Miss has to avoid. Third and longs against a very athletic group on the front. It was Glenn Schumann, the defensive coordinator. Ulysses Bentley is the running back in for Parrish today. George throws a floater. Intercepted by Dan Jackson. And the sixth-year senior brings it back near the 20 yard. They put pressure on Dart, who's limping as he heads to the sideline. Jackson picked it off the fourth of his career. And Jalen Walker working against the right guard. Jerquan Scott beats him inside, gets a hand on Dart. Release, can't follow through. The ball sails high, and it's easily intercepted. Just a great pass rush on consecutive plays from Georgia, and a big interception to start the game for the Georgia Bulldogs. We mentioned Dart, the games when he hasn't been very accurate, not coincidentally, he's been pressured by teams like Kentucky and South Carolina. Trevor Etienne is on the field as the running back for Georgia, playing through a rib injury that took him out of the game against Florida in Jacksonville last week, just prior to the half. He got six on the carry. Dart obviously upset. Both with the result of the play and the physical pain that sends him into the medical tent. ETN is their leading rusher. Straight ahead again. And he's down near the 12 yard line. About a yard short of the first down. Georgia needs to continue to commit to running the football. They've been very pass happy this year, but they are hoping to get 25 touches to their running backs today. ETN, nice cut, good haul, first down. First and goal, Georgia at the seven. That's a five-yard gain for ETN. First year at Georgia is a transfer from Florida, where he played two seasons for the Gators. He started out and now stays on the field. Georgia has been a very slow starting team. Cash Jones joins ETN. They're on either side of Beck. They stick with the run. Room outside. And ETN gets to the four. Chris Paul led the way for the Ole Miss defense. Excellent linebacker, a transfer from Arkansas. And this defense has been outstanding all season long against the run. 82 yards a game given up. That's one of the tops in the country. But you know, Georgia, with that being a huge point of emphasis, they're going to continue to lean on it, especially here in the red zone where the field's condensed. After the turnover, Georgia's run four plays. All of them carries from Travis Etienne. Extra tight ends on the field now. Cash Jones, the running back, he gets it on the delay, and he's going down for a loss. Built it down back at the eight-yard line. Chris Paul led the way again. They got hammered by the dogs in Athens last year. Jackson Dart limping along the sideline. And that's when Lane Kiffin realized his program was better, but not good enough to compete with Georgia. So they went into the portal for a lot of players, especially on defense, including Paul. They really upgraded their pass rush for downs like this, too. Watch these defensive linemen see if they can get home. Third down and goal. Quick throw out wide. ETN maneuvering, fighting, and short. Off the goal line, they'll mark him near the two. Jaden Kennedy made the tackle. Dart continues limping on his way to the locker room. That is a huge development. And the defense holds, or does it 
force a field goal attempt. No, Kirby Smart's leaving the offense on the field on fourth down and goal from the two. Aggressive here. I would probably take the points on the road on the short field. They've been a terrific fourth down team this year. Nate Frazier to the goal line. Touchdown, Georgia. The true freshman from Compton, California. In from two yards out. And the fourth down success continues for the Dogs. They lead six to nothing. And a great job on the outside. You got tight ends and wide receivers. Humphreys number 16, he gets beat inside. But the progressive pylon cam shows you just how hard Frazier hits that hole, surges across, and cashes in on the fourth down gamble. Austin Simmons as the quarterback, the lefty, red shirt freshman out of Miami, Pahokee High School, north of Miami. He's appeared in mop-up duty in six games, including last week he came in with about 10 minutes to go, went three for three and threw their seventh and final touchdown pass of the day against the Razorbacks. He's a very gifted young man, live arm, Really accurate baseball player with a background, so he can really a natural thrower, but they're going to have to run the ball to take the pressure off the freshman. There's a four-star prospect coming out of high school. Throws on the run. Juice Wells had to lunge for it. He caught it. And it's a first down with an 11-yard gain to Wells. Transfer from South Carolina. They've been expecting more from him, and lately he's been giving it to them. Battled injuries when he first arrived here in Oxford. Play fake, Simmons, that pass is complete. Caught by Daquan Wright. He had nine catches last week. The tight end got 11 more. The Rebels go quickly. And with the quick game, this Georgia defense does a great job. Stas Stockhouse drops out underneath and tips it. But luckily, right there on the receiving end. A great break for Ole Miss. Stackhouse deflected it, but it wound up right in the hands of Wright. Ulysses Bentley, the running back. You know, they obviously would rather have Trey Harris. Lane Kiffin thinks he's the best receiver in the country. The one thing we saw last week, and the coaches talked about it, when Jackson Dart was the quarterback last week, you don't get locked on one guy, as you might when Harris is in there. They think they have a lot of weapons, and they used them all last week. Bentley dropped for loss of one by C.J. Allen. Yeah, sometimes when you have an elite weapon at wide receiver, I play with Julio Jones, sometimes when you look at the field, you're looking through a straw in the direction of that great takeover the game guy. This now opens up the whole offense, but it's going to be tough for a freshman as Dart's coming back to the field. And noticing, uh, noticeably limping as he does, play action pass, and the catch made by Jordan Watkins of his record-setting performance last week against the Hogs when he had eight catches for a school record 254 yards and five touchdowns which tied the conference record and set the school record they're about two yards short of the first down and going for it just inside the 45 Initially, Lane Kiffin ran on his big defensive tackle, J.J. Pegues, but I think with it being kind of a long one, they're deciding not to go with that short yardage package that's been unstoppable all year long. So no running threat from Dart. Their leading rusher out as well, and their leading receiver with the backup quarterback going for it on fourth down. Kane and Lee, the slot receiver, has a first down. Dan Jackson made the tackle. Austin Simmons thrust into the action and cool as a cucumber so far. And really nice design here. They kind of treat that like a stack. And you know Lee's going to have one-on-one -on -one with outside leverage. A great throw. 12-yard gain. He hasn't missed yet, and now he has as he fires one over the head of Daquan Wright. And he's a tough man to air mail. Big target. For Lane Kiffin's quarterback, 6'4", 205, excuse me, 255, the transfer from Virginia Tech. Dart has his helmet on. Simmons, 4 out of 5 for 44. He's marched them to the 32 of Georgia on 2nd and 10. Bentley, who was involved as a backup last year, Greg, to Quinshawn Judkins. Dart looks like he wants to come back in. Uh, hasn't played anywhere near as much this year. Lane Kiffin said 
Well, basically, other guys in the running back room have outperformed him. But Matt Jones, who was the backup, also injured. So it's Bentley, the running back, who's been there number three most of the year. Caden Lee is open. First and goal, Rebels. Simmons, a revelation. Another throw on target to a talented receiver for 20 yards. And that was a thing of beauty there from Simmons. And now expect the run game. And they need to run it outside the tackles. And how impressive, too, as they give it to Bentley up the middle and into the end zone. Jackson Dart, no Trey Harris, no problem. Second touchdown of the season for Ulysses Bentley, the fourth. And here's Caden Davis to add the extra point. How impressive was Austin Simmons, not just the passing, but managing the tempo. What an answer by the Ole Miss Rebels. Ten plays, 75 yards, a third down conversion, a fourth down conversion. And the Rebels answer as Bentley looks on. They haven't lost their explosiveness without Trey Harris, without Jackson Dar, without Henry Parrish. Five of those ten plays on the drive went for ten yards or more. Talk to Kirby Smart about the Ole Miss offense. That's the first word he used, explosive. Caden Davis, ordinarily a touchback kicker. I don't know if he slipped on the kickoff, but he squibs it down the field. And mishandled for a moment by Cash Jones. They're without their usual return man, Anthony Evans. And George is going to start inside the 15-yard line. Second possession for Georgia. The first one was at the plus 21-yard line after the interception by Dan Jackson. They went seven plays to score the opening touchdown of the game. Flags down. Nifty run by ETN. Shifty maneuvering. Well, it's coming back for the first penalty of the game assessed against either team. We mentioned the slow starts. They have seven already, but that's set up by the defense. They've scored under 14 points per game in first halves this season. Only Kentucky, Auburn, and Mississippi State. They're the worst teams in the SEC this year. Faring worse in first half scoring. Nate Frazier banged down at the 11 yard line. He got two. Second down and 13. And Cash Jones dropped for a loss. Xavier Harris, part of the deep and talented Ole Miss front that leads the country in tackles for a loss. And he's working against right guard Tate Ratledge, who's been a little bit banged up. He goes right around him. Ratledge returned last week, but did not look anywhere near 100%. And this athleticism of Ole Miss's defense is going to be a handful if this defensive line doesn't handle it. Third down and 15. Bag. Broken up. Trying to get it to Dylan Bell. Jaden Kennedy knocked it away. And that's an encouraging start for the Ole Miss defense as they've been struggling to find somebody to play corner opposite Trey Amos. Jackson darts the man. He's the one that got you here. He's the one that's kind of built this thing to where it's at right now. But my goodness, Simmons looked good and in rhythm on that first drive. Dart throws, open receiver, Daquan Wright, another first down, another double-digit yardage play, 13 on the completion to Wright. And Ole Miss wants to play this game with quick game by getting the ball out quick and getting it on the perimeter. If the game's played between the tackles, they lose, but if they can play it with their wide receivers, they're in good shape. Caden Lee was the motion man, nice catch, Caden Priest-Corn, another tight end. 
Back in action after he played only one snap at Arkansas due to injury, and they're on the move again. 6'1", 235 pounds. Dart to the sideline, corner of the end zone for Juice Wells. Julian Humphrey had the coverage, third down and eight Ole Miss. On their last possession, option pitch to him, he has some running room. What a nifty move to get a couple. But he did not get to the first down marker, K.J. Bolden there, the freshman to take him out. 23-yard try for Davis, a transfer from Texas A&M in his second year here. It's good, and Ole Miss leads for the first time today, 10-7. To <laughs> From the 29, Nate Frazier, the running back. And he gets stood up after a one-yard gain. This is nothing new for Georgia. Even though they're 7-1, and one, they keep having to come from behind since the start of Last season, this is now the 13th time in their last 16 conference games that they have trailed at at least one point. They're 13 and two in those games. They have not been great on third down this year. Kirby Smart's offense, they love to get in third and manageable like this, but even this down and distance has been a challenge. They usually look in the direction though of Dominic Lovick. He's their go-to guy on third down. Last year, they were 55% on third down, leading the nation. And a whistle before the snap with the play clock running down. Prior to the play clock running out, first charge timeout, Georgia. 30 seconds. Third down and four. Cash Jones, the running back. Ole Miss doesn't blitz much. They get pressure with four. They rush four. They move back. He throws. Landon Humphreys. Good catch. And then it came out. When he got blasted by John Saunders Jr. This has been a problem for Georgia receivers. Drops. The ball's a little bit wet. And it's a perfect collision by John Saunders. One that you would think Humphrey would be able to reel in. But he can't because the helmet initiates that contact and dislodges the football. It's just a perfect defensive play there by Saunders. 25 drops for Georgia. You know, a lot of heat on Carson Beck, but that certainly doesn't help. Only UAB has dropped more among all FBS teams. Yeah, and considering the talent that they have in their receiver core, it's really inexcusable. And you can actually point to several drops early in the game that really disrupt the confidence that Carson Beck has played with. So we'll see if he handles it better today, but you see he starts to press when the receiver drop passes early. Under a minute to go in the quarter. Wide open, Bentley in the middle of the field. And down at the 39-yard line of Georgia. 31 more for Ole Miss. And this is just a bust. You're going to see number three, that C.J. Allen, he just completely loses track of where the running back is, and he's out the gate. Dart on the balky ankle. Sends it out wide to Bentley. Gets shoved out of bounds by C.J. Allen at the 32. It was one year ago Allen made his first start for Kirby Smart against Ole Miss. After Jamon Dumas Johnson broke his arm the week before against Missouri. And Allen's become a stalwart. That's the end of the first quarter. ESPN's presentation of college football on ABC will return after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Jackson Dart is the quarterback. They're on the move again to start the second quarter, leading 10 to 7, second and three at the Georgia 32. And Dart will be marked down short of the first down. 1 and 11 is Lane's record overall against the top five when you count his other stops at Tennessee and USC and FAU. So. I heard Paul Feinbaum talking about it the other day, kind of comparing him to James Franklin. Yeah. You know, you, you win a lot, 
But now the knock is, can you win the big one? Yeah, and I don't think he's ever had the personnel to do it. This year, made wholesale changes to how they attacked the line of scrimmage and recruiting, and the portal as well. So this is a more capable team than ever before. J.J. Pegues is on the field. That, uh, while he's more than 300 pounds, it is that little creature that has brought about a delay. <laughs> I feel like you should do a, a Kevin Harlan impression here and call him if he takes off to the end zone here. You know? Kevin <laughs> is Hall of Fame good at that and everything else that he does as well. So we'll leave that to him, one of the all-time greats in our business. <laughs> the Georgia players are yeah. running away from him. Terrorizing the Georgia sideline right now. And you go up against 300-pounders and it doesn't bother you, but a little squirrel has you scampering out of the way. I think if you're all Miss, you really don't like this delay. You have no. everything going your way. You have George on its heels. And they're above. It seems to hand the ball to big number 38, J.J. Pegues. Starting defensive lineman who also comes in on offense. And he hasn't been stopped yet. He's scored six touchdowns and has picked up first downs on the other five. So he's 11 for 11 in these uh, situations short yardage and goal line we're knocking on wood for those old miss fans are saying that there's gonna be an announcer curse here we're knocking on wood and a direct snap to him and there he goes he is super athletic at 315 pounds and they think he can break one they're not just looking for a one yard gain he almost broke that one and a great job too on the end of the line of scrimmage Daquan Wright, number eight, securing the edge and allowing the big fella to get to the perimeter. He's from right here in Oxford. They call him the mayor of Oxford. First down, Ole Miss. Play fake, Jackson Dart, and then the dump down, and Bentley's dumped down for a loss. Back at the 28-yard line by Raylan Wilson. Two minutes gone by, second quarter. It all Ole Miss since the opening turn led to the Georgia touchdown. Dark's pass incomplete, looking for Jordan Watkins. With Dale and Everett in coverage, a two-year starter at corner for the Georgia Bulldogs. Dart was sacked only one time while setting their passing record last week at Arkansas. Conservative play call third and 17, a run for Ulysses Bentley. Chris Cole, the freshman, made the tackle. He's been seeing more action in the absence of the veteran Smile Munden, who's been out with a foot injury. So here comes Caden Davis, one for one today, and now 16 out of 19 for the year. He did slip on a kickoff. Rain continues to fall. High snap. And the kick still good from 43 yards out. Good job by the holder, Charlie Pollock. So here's Carson Beck. Two out of four passing so far. And on target to Lawson Lucky, the tight end, out to the 39-yard line. 14 yards and a first down. So much has been made of Carson Beck and just how many mistakes he's made in the passing game. There's been several, but it already looks like today he's playing with good rhythm. Looks like his feet are underneath him. He's getting the ball out quickly, but the big plays that Ole Miss continues to create are going to be a problem for Georgia. Fifth year senior. Second year starter. Way a couple of years behind Stetson Bennett. And very near a first down is Nate Frazier. Sometimes when you're a, a top guy like Carson Beck was, it's, it's understandable that people expect you to make every throw look easy, and that's just not the case. He's got to take what the defense gives him, and today he's been really good with his decision-making. On third and short, Frazier... Looks like he got the first down. If it's the mark from the official on the far side of the field, you see running in, and it is a first down. Frazier powerfully built at 210 pounds. Look 
looked like he just continued to churn ahead, and Frazier's going to be really big time here in no time whatsoever. He's got a lot of speed. Carson back, fires the throw altered by the rush. Arian Smith, the intended receiver. And just unblocked right around the edge is some Taryn Perkins, who's one of the fastest guys on this Ole Miss football team. He arrives just early enough to affect how accurate Carson Beck was delivering that football, but it didn't look like he touched him, so the ball might have just came out of his hand a little awkward. On second and ten, he's pressured and taken down. Back at the 39-yard line by Jared Ivey. And Ivey working against Tate Ratledge, who we told you earlier, just his second game back from the injured ankle. He's missed a ton of time, and he hasn't looked anywhere near 100%. That's twice now that Ole Miss has matched up one-on-one -on -one against the right guard, and they've gotten home in both different occasions. 42nd sack of the year for Ole Miss, the first today. They lead the nation in that category. Third down and 18. Beck running away from the rush. And a late flag thrown. The pass nowhere near a Georgia Bulldog, but there's a flag thrown in the secondary. Haley, number five, and this is John Saunders holding Lawson Lucky. It's a heavily penalized Ole Miss team, and this one really hurts. This is massive. I mean, you're going to see Lawson Lucky try to work inside, and Saunders just really doesn't do anything to get out of the way. I mean, he just grabs him, doesn't let Lucky cross face, and it's an oh, easy wow. call for the official, and just a terrible penalty for Ole Miss. They have given opposing offenses, that's their 28th first down awarded because of a defensive penalty among the highest in the nation. You just can't do that on third and long. Huge break for Georgia. Frazier in trouble. Stayed on his feet and turned a two-yard loss into a gain of five. Ole Miss has been penalized 86 yards per game. Only Liberty and UTSA seem more penalty yardage per game stepped off against them then have the rebels under nine minutes to go first half 13 to 7 Ole Miss Frazier collared and yanked back after he got a yard Chris Paul nicknamed who but you hear the fans chanting made the tackle Georgian native Transfer from Arkansas. And third down and four for Georgia here. Not a very good down and distance for them this year. They are just 27% conversion on fourth and four to six. That's 125th in the country. But they, when they go, they always look in the direction, almost always look in the direction of Dominic Lovett. Number six, that's their go-to guy on third down. Third down and four. Bunch to the left of Beck. Play clock under five. Out wide it goes to Lovett and he's dropped for a loss. John Saunders again. And the punt team comes on for the third time already for the Dogs. And a great job by John Saunders. Ole Miss shows a pressure look, which forces Carson Beck to make a check. Gets the ball out of his hands quickly, but Saunders was prepared. He wins to the outside and drops Lovett for the third down stop. So Brett Forsen with Micah Davis back deep. End over end, Davis lets it go. And it goes out of bounds at the one. Arian Smith was there to catch it, but he slipped. And George actually benefited from that. He would have caught it around the two. Instead, the ball is... Out of bounds inside the one, although the officials conferring they may move it a yard or two. 44 yard punt, we think. 13 to 7 Ole Miss. Dominic Thomas is coming at running back. Jackson Dart under duress just did get it off. An incomplete pass intended for Juice Wells with Daniel Harris in coverage.
When you're backed up in a situation like this, the offense always utilizes a hard count. You see if you can't get that defense to jump into the neutral zone, then you get a free play and potentially a free five yards. And then if you jump off sides, who cares? You lose one inch. Doesn't make a difference. So go on the hard count here. Thomas remains the running back. He has to get out of the end zone. And he just barely did back across the line of scrimmage and not much more. Thomas in his first year here. Transferred in late. He was at Georgia State in the spring. They had a coaching change. He decided to go back in the portal and provide some depth at running back for Ole Miss. Third down and ten. The Rebels two out of six on third down. Dart throws. Jordan Watkins first down. Bounces off would-be tacklers and goes down at the 18-yard line. Raylan Wilson finally knocked him down. They get 17, a huge third down conversion. Really nice accurate throw there from Jackson Darden. How about Watkins showing off the speed? They send Thomas out widest to the left. Five receivers, three to Jackson Dart's left. Watkins breaks free again. Jordan Watkins down at the Georgia 49. He had five touchdowns last week. Two of them were more than 60 yards. That's 33 more yards for Ole Miss. And they are doing a great job just picking apart an excellent secondary. But at some point, this Georgia pass rush has to get home. Dart has a lot of time to operate in the backfield. It's an improved offensive line. And they scheme very well to get the ball out as quickly as they can. Ulysses Bentley back in at running back now. They marked it at the 50-yard line. Bentley stood up by Malachi Starks. Chaz Chambliss at the bottom of the pile. Five-yard gain. Starks a great safety. Just named one of the 16 semifinalists for the Jim Thorpe Award. He's the best defensive back in the country. He does an amazing job back there, the signal caller, and not a guy that you want to target in coverage. Pressure brought by Glenn Schumann. Juice Wells. Jazz Chandless had him tied up down low. It's six yards and another Rebels first down. Third down and seven. Design quarterback draw for Dart. They must think his ankle is more than good enough. Didn't really get anything there. A yard and that's it. And on fourth down and seven, Lane Kiffin, who leans heavily on analytics, has the offense still on the field. I think that third down play call with the quarterback run was an indicator that they were going for it here on fourth down. But uh, Jackson Dart doesn't look healthy. you got to find a, a matchup on the outside that you like. And in this spot, I like working the slot up top. Watkins, ordinarily a wide receiver, is the running back. Tight end against number three, linebacker. I'd take advantage of that. Oh, they just adjusted, so Starks will be on it. And Starks comes on a blitz. And whistles stop the play. Dart took a hit after the whistle sounded, and Wayne Kiffin all the way out beyond the numbers to scream at the officials. Was got a big hit too by Warren Brinson. Prior to the delay game foul, timeout. Ole Miss. The first. Because the officials didn't administer that very well, Dart took a hit. Three minutes to go in the half. After the timeout, Lane Kiffins decided to send on Caden Davis. We'll try a 53 yarder. What little breeze there is is at his back. He has a big leg. You'll remember he made a 57-yarder at LSU in overtime. Already connected from 43 with plenty of room to spare. Plenty of leg into that one. Look out in Tupelo. These kickers are so good. And Lane Kiffin made the right decision. Much better snap this time. Perfect hold and... 
My goodness. <laughs> you said Tupelo. Tupelo, Memphis, anything just right up the highway. That thing had a lot of room as it sneaks inside that left upright. Although that's for deductive reasoning. Syracuse very proud. Beck zings one. A little bit behind Dylan Bell, but he made a nice catch. 15 yards and a first down. Chad Kelly threw for 341 and three touchdowns. It was in Tuscaloosa. Quick screen to Dominic Lovett, and the dogs are on the move to the Rebel 48 with a 13-yard gain. See if they get a snap off before the two-minute timeout. It's not looking likely, though. Good start to this drive. See if Georgia can kind of inject some life into the offense here. Create some momentum. Two-minute timeout. Ole Miss leading 16-7. to You're watching the SEC on ABC, presented by Burger King. Back throws incomplete. Trying to get it to Ben Urosic, the transfer from Stanford. Looked like Saunders might have gotten a piece of this. They tried to work a little pump wheel, really open there for a second, but it looked like Saunders might have just gotten a little bit of it. He does to deflect it, and Urasa can't reel it in. Third down and six. There are two out of six on third down, perhaps four down territory for Kirby Smart. Cash Jones went out in motion. Back goes down! Back at the 47-yard line. Princely Uman Mielin for a nine-yard sack. And this is a matchup that Ole Miss thought they could take advantage of. Uman Mielin works right around the left tackle, Ernest Green. There's really nothing Carson Beck can do but secure the football. And Ole Miss, this is why they went to the portal and brought in these stars along the defensive line for moments like that. And that time, Uman Mielin makes them pay. A little surprised they've run him a couple of times. Yeah, they probably run him three or four times, and so far, not a whole lot going there. So they're going to have to find something in the run game in the second half. Ulysses Bentley in trouble and dropped behind the line of scrimmage by the terrific linebacker Jalen Walker with the lead, their own nine yard line. Wet conditions. Bentley again got away from Dan Jackson, ran out of bounds at the 14-yard line. Bentley again trying to go up the gut. Jalen Walker was there, and now Kirby Smart will use one of his two remaining timeouts. No <laughs> chance for Georgia to try to take advantage. Bentley relieved undoubtedly. Well, Georgia keeps coming from behind. They're 15 and 12 under Kirby when trailing at the half. Sixteen to seven, really total domination by Ole Miss. Our score at halftime, Ole Miss 16, Georgia 7. We'll send you to the studio with a Capital One halftime report after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Carson Beck under center. Six out of ten passing for 49 yards. He was sacked twice. Trevor Etienne, the running back, they faced a fake the toss to him. And the throw is on target, uh, Landon Humphreys, for a first down just across the 40-yard line with Chris Graves in coverage for Ole Miss. The number receiver downfield, number 84. Didn't see a flag, but there was one, obviously, and it's been Urosic who's flagged. And they shifted Urosic from the right to the left, and it looked like Arian Smith tried to get off the ball, but didn't get off enough, so was covering up Urosic to the inside, making him ineligible, so a critical mistake wipes out a nice gain on first down. And a penalty-free game, that's just the second against George and Ole Miss, a heavily penalized team. Committed only one in the first half. Beck given a clean pocket, throws caught in traffic. Dylan Bell made the catch with Trey Washington, the safety right there. 
for the Rebels. Comes up just shy of the first down at the 34-yard line. And that's the type of throw I want to see from Carson Beck, not just the rest of this game, but the rest of this season. Strong, decisive, accurate, tight coverage, and he paints it on his wide receiver. That's the guy we saw last year that made him the top prospect coming into the season at quarterback by Mel Kuyper. Really has everything you want, including the size, 6'4", 220, arm strength. More accurate last year than he was this year. Cash Jones carries for the first down. Walter Nolan, another one of those transfers brought over to beef up the defense, made the tackle for Texas A&M. For the beginning of the year, he was number one on Mel Kuyper's big board among quarterbacks. And number eight overall is going to be a top ten first round pick. Now he's the number six quarterback and not in Mel's top 25 overall on the big board. Mel is a third round grade for him. I would think with his skill set, he'll go before the third round. I think this is about as low as he'll go. If he can start stringing together good performance, it'll be in good shape. Before the snap, ball start. Offense, number 57. Five yard penalty. First down. Monroe Freeling. He's been seeing some action at right tackle for Georgia in recent games. Flinched. And he's now in because they decided to move the starting right tackle, Xavier Trust, down to right guard because Tate Ratledge, the starting right guard, has been struggling today. So Freeling goes in, makes a critical mistake in their first and 15 again. Ratledge and then Micah Morris, who replaced Ratledge when he was out with an injury. They've both been banged up lately at right guard, so they're down to their third with Truss shifting over. All right, two Georgia penalties. They had won the entire first half. Catch and run. Lawson Lucky lunges across the line to gain and has a Georgia first down. Aaron Smith, who can fly the motion man. Here's Dylan Bell leaping over his own man. Monroe Freeling, and he has a first down to the 39-yard line with a 12-yard pickup. Bet given plenty of time. Throws, catch, Jones open. First down. Out of bounds near the 10. They sent Jones in motion out of the backfield. And it was Princely Emmanuel in the defensive end who was running in coverage with Jones. Yeah, that's not the matchup you want. If you're the defensive coordinator, Pete Golding, get a running back. It's working against the defensive end. That's the peel with him. Beck was late getting to him, but he got him there just in time. And he got there just a bit earlier. It would have been a touchdown. Six. Play of the drive upcoming. Play fake to Nate Frazier. And the pass incomplete intended for your Rossick. So they have 65 yards on this opening drive of the second half. They had 69 the entire first half. Already four plays of 10 plus on this drive. They have three in the first half for Mike Bobo. I anticipate them as the field now is starting to condense. If you can get some quick catch and runs, quick throws, that's fine. I'd lean on the run game here. They've had success in this part of the field earlier in the game. Nate Frazier, the running back. Dominic Lovett, the motion man. They do run it with Frazier. Tough run. He spins down to the five-yard line. They're going to mark it at the six. Trey Washington made the tackle. Four-yard run for the freshman Frazier. There's an injured Ole Miss Rebel. It's Cash Jones, the running back. Carson Beck dumps it for Jones and very little there. Stopped at the five-yard line by T.J. Dottery. And Kirby Smart sends the field goal team on, wants to make it a one-score game. Good opening drive by Georgia, but a terrific job inside the 10 by this Ole Miss defense. That time kind of fooled Georgia, had to throw it underneath, and they rally up to make the tackle. Here's Woodring. Sophomore's been terrific. 30 straight inside of... 50 yards as you saw his only miss was 15 tries this year was a 55 yarder against Mississippi State so no announcer jinx there and no graphics jinx which led to the announcers commenting about how good and what a streak Woodring is on 
has a play action fake and a completion to Jordan Watkins, who gets nine on his fourth catch of the day. Dart given a nice pocket. Man breaking free over the middle. Caden Lee. Chopped down by Dan Jackson. 24 yards on the game. First down, Rebels, they go quickly to the ball. Dart with Dominique Thomas staying in the block. Another open receiver, Lee again, inside the 15-yard line. Not often you see receivers wide open against this Georgia defense, but he was again for 27 more. It's a reverse. Watkins looked like he might want to throw it. He gets spun around and he's down inside the 10-yard line. Chopped down by Dale and Everett. They need the four-yard line. It's third down and six. Dart. Wells. Touchdown. Juice Wells. Second half this afternoon, they don't need him. Clearly a catch. And Lane Kiffin is going to go for two. Try to make it a 14-point game. Go for Dose is brought to you by Dos Equis. What an answer by the Ole Miss offense after Georgia marched down and kicked a field goal. Dominique Thomas, the running back here on the two-point play. Dart slip. Dart just shovels it forward. An incomplete pass. And they go 75 yards in eight plays. And Juice Wells. They've been looking for more from him. A 10-yard touchdown. They're up by 12. Take a look at the last touchdown by the AT&T Connected Cam. Look at the eyes of K.J. Bolden. That's to tell you the story. He's going to look and he's going to notice that his eyes are not on the intended receiver. Where are they? They are not in the backfield, excuse me. They are on the intended receiver. So Dart knows that he won't locate the ball. So as a result, knowing that he's not looking to him, he can just throw it right above his helmet. He'll never see it. And Juice Wells can go up, reel it in, in the back of the end zone for a touchdown. That was a great job by Jackson Dart, seeing the defender's eyes, taking advantage of it with great ball placement right over the top of his head. J.J. Pegues not in the middle of that defensive front on first down for Georgia. Nate Frazier rips ahead for nine. Here's Molly. Body injury. He's still in the locker room now. Nate Frazier again. Tough run back curling at the end to get to the 41. Eight more. Frazier's had the bulk of the ball carry. Trevor Etienne playing through the rib injuries, carried five times. Frazier now 11 carries. Beck lofts it ahead to Urasik. Tackled from behind. At the 48-yard line, they got seven. Under five minutes to go, third quarter. Pressure on Beck, and he throws it away over the head of Frazier. Well, Molly spoke with Carson Beck during the week. We had the game to start the year against Clemson in Atlanta. Carson Beck told Molly he had three goals, three reasons, big reasons why he came back. Win a national championship as the starting quarterback, win the Heisman Trophy, get drafted in the first round. The Heisman Trophy is out the window chance he could be a first round pick but that's less likely when the year started over the middle there's Dominic Lovett the catch he admitted to Molly this week he's just put a lot of pressure on himself he's tried to do too much and he's played much more within the offense today and this is big time watch how he scans the field here doesn't like it to the right works all the way back to his number three wide receiver that's Lovett across the middle that was great poise and decision making and an accurate throw 
Decision making has been the biggest problem. He's trying to jam it into tough situations. Cash Jones chopped down by Chris Graves. Molly? Yeah, Beck admitted that pressure has really hurt his performance, and he admitted this week he finally just let it go, shifted his focus to the people around him, and he said that it's working. He felt something click this week where he's finally able to let go of all of that pressure and just take everything play by play. He said he feels like a different player this week because of that. There's been a lot of talk. He misses Brock Bowers. is a great tight end. And Lad McConkey, they're both in the NFL now. They played a lot of last season without them. Bowers missed four games. McConkey missed five. Frazier spun around and dropped. The ball's out at the end of the play. Rebels think they have it right in front of their sideline. Xavier Harris knocked it out. And Ole Miss has recovered. Walter Nolan has the fumble. on it, but it's play made by Xavier Harris, who pulls it free from the outstanding freshman, Nate Frazier, who's had some fumbling issues before, but what a play by Ole Miss's defense. Who made the play to rip the fumble out with the geese on the bench. Jordan Watkins dropped for a loss on first down for Ole Miss, a three-yard loss tackled by the freshman, Chris Cole. George is 7-1, or better, for the seventh time in the last eight years under Kirby. Jackson Dart, all oh, kinds of grass over there. And the crowd loved the fact that he lowered his shoulder into K.J. Bolden. And it's a first down after a 21-yard run by Dart. Play clock at one. They just did get it off. It's a blitz. It's another tip ball. And almost caught by Jalen Walker. And just a great job. They bring pressure around. Number three, C.J. Allen, is unblocked. Dart knows he has to get rid of the football. He's got a guy open underneath. That's Bentley. But the outstanding linebacker, Allen, goes up, tips it. And it falls incomplete, nearly intercepted. Carson Beck, fake to ETN, who's back in. Here's Arian Smith, knocked down at the line of scrimmage by Yam Banks. The backup the defensive back who plays quite a bit, transfer from South Alabama. of running room for the speedy Arian Smith. After the catch, she got nine. We're under a minute to go in the third quarter. Three out of nine on third down. Been a season-long problem. Beck keeps it and lunges ahead for the first down. 6-4, 220, why not? It might be the last play of this third quarter. Georgia in no hurry to line up and snap it again. They've come back time and time again. Do they have one more in them? Likely the final play now of the quarter. They did line up to have a chance to snap it, but did not. ESPN's presentation of college football on ABC. We'll return after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Much better third quarter on offense. But they were still outscored by Ole Miss 6-3 in that third quarter. This record-setting crowd starting to feel like they might be here on an historic night. It will be the highest-ranked opponent they've ever defeated at home. AP-ranked opponent during the poll era, which goes back to 1936. Never beat a top two opponent here. George is number three in the CFP, but they're number two in the AP this week. When they beat Alabama here in 2014, the Tide was ranked number three in the country. But a long way to go, and the team with a knack for coming back, as they've done over and over again, particularly the last two years. for the smoke to clear here. <laughs> that camera shot doesn't look that bad, but from where we are, 
It's bad. Nick, I always thought the smoke was an advantage for the away team because you can't see the white jersey through the smoke. What do you think, Sean? They're uh, hoping for a little help from the breeze here, but there really isn't any. <laughs> Though for this next play and this next sequence of plays, George has done a great job of creating misdirection and indecision amongst Ole Miss's defensive line. Ole Miss's defensive line has been able to tee off early in this game, but the misdirection has kind of slowed down that pass rush. So as a result, Carson Beck's had more time to find receivers downfield, and the offense has started to click as a result. Well, the smoke is sufficiently lifted. Last time they overcame a 10-point deficit entering the fourth quarter on the road was 1999 against Vanderbilt. Of course, when you have the success that they've had over the years, you're not down much entering the fourth quarter. Twice this year, they're one and one. The loss, of course, at Alabama. The ball comes out! And it looked like Georgia got it back. Frazier, the ball carry, he's already lost a fumble in the third quarter and the ETN's going to come in for him. Jared Wilson, the center, pounced on the fumble. And that's a huge problem. I mean, Frazier kind of went to the doghouse a little bit because of fumbles in practice. Here almost loses another one. So they bring in the more sure-handed ETN now. Even though he's not at 100%, he will secure the football. Trey Amos ripped it out. Transfer cornerback from Alabama who's had a terrific year. Wound up as a five-yard gain through the smoke. Beck throws short of the first down to Dylan Bell. Four-yard gain. What a difference a year makes. Last year in Athens, Georgia scored 52 points in a 52-17 win over then number 10 Ole Miss. The worst loss of Lane Kiffin's tenure here. Today is the Ole Miss defense that has ruled the day. We would anticipate Georgia challenging that offensive line here on third and short, though, trying to run it to convert on third and one. Just 216 yards of offense for the Dogs today. ETN. Patient run. Got a first down. EJ Dottery made the tackle. Wonder if we'll see Frazier again. Having put the ball on the ground twice now. Six carries for 24 for ETN. Playing through a rib injury. Beck trying to find somewhere to go. Now he takes off running and dives across the 40. Nine yard gain. He's a very good athlete. He's capable of that more often than he does, but he doesn't need to do it. Well protected by that offensive line, but he was a college recruited baseball player. Originally that was his plan to go to Florida and play baseball, but then when he started getting recruited, to play football. He chose football and Hardy told us early in the year because football you get a full scholarship. <laughs> Baseball usually it's a partial scholarship. He made the right decision and the play for a long time. Cash Jones on second and two got nothing. The mayor of Oxford. J.G. Pegues. He's the mayor but even he couldn't find enough tickets for this one with this record setting crowd. He said he has a bunch of cousins. Yeah, it's all a lot of people. I'm sorry. I can't get you tickets. I just don't have enough <laughs> Understandable it's a tough situation and another tough situation here for the Georgia offense third down and medium Had this down a distance multiple times today number six Dominic Lovett. That's their guy in short yardage medium situations Five out of eleven on third down. It's a blitz. They were close to being offside and it's another sack Presley, Uman Muel, and the ball is still free. Recovered by Georgia for an even bigger loss as Cash Jones got taken down back near the 20. There is a flag down on the far side of the field. What a wild play that was, and this is a really important call by Jeff Heiser. Personal foul, face mask. Defense, number 25. Oh, wow. Automatic first down. It would have been 
fourth and forever for Georgia. With a huge loss negated on the face mask against the excellent senior safety, Trey Washington. And just such a crazy play right there, but very obvious. I mean, they are off the field. And because of all this twists and moves and up front off the left-hand side, it's a great move there by Prince Uman Biel. And the ball's dislodged. It gets kicked around. Looked like for a moment they were going to be able to recover it, but they didn't. Uman Mielin makes the play, and just really unfortunate there for Ole Miss, though, to have that fumble picked up by a running back and then have the unfortunate right hand of Trey Washington up into the face mask where it results in a free first down on a broken play. Well, just the second Ole Miss penalty today. They both have been on the defense, both to extend drives for Georgia. And the other common denominator, the two losses for Lane Kiffin this year uh, against Kentucky here in at LSU. They had a chance to win the game if they could just get a fourth down stop in the fourth quarter. And in both games, they couldn't do that late and wound up losing. Will they get the key stop today when they need it most? Under 11 minutes to go. Back with pressure coming in down. Santaren Perkins third sack for the Rebels well the left tackle is struggling so much earned a screen that they put Oscar Delt number four over there to try to help but it doesn't matter Santaren Perkins is among the fastest players on this Ole Miss football team they say he can run a 4-3 low 4-3 he goes fast as he can around the edge to drop back for another sack He's an edge rusher at 210. Pete Gooding, the coordinator, said ideally he'd be a will linebacker, but they need him as an edge rusher. He leads the SEC with 10 sacks. Flagged down before the snap. Thrown by the umpire. Play again. Defense number 23 for clapping. Five yard penalty. Seven down. Tyree Coleman called for the penalty. That just basically wipes out the first down sack, too. I mean, that's potentially a pretty significant penalty there as Tyree Coleman were trying to communicate with the secondary. And now, it, not all the way back to the sticks, but George is in a much better situation. Clock rolls under 10 minutes to go. Ole Miss, a game it has to have with an eye toward the college football playoff. That's Perkins on the bottom. ETN went in motion. They sent four receivers over there. Beck scrambling for his life. Carson Beck near another first down to the 38-yard line. They'll need three on third down. He was run down by T.J. Dottery. They might have gotten away with a hold here. I don't think so. On Monroe Freeling, number 57, Sunterra Perkins worked inside, and he just shoots right inside, but watch the left arm of Freeling. Looks like he kind of grabs Sunterra Perkins and tackles him to the ground. I mean, that's one that I think they probably should have called. Third down and three. You'd have to think this is four down territory. Back short set on target for a first down. To the 27 yard line goes Dominic Lovett. Here's Smith in the slot. They've converted their last four third downs. Has Georgia three of them on this drive? They're moving, but they've taken almost nine minutes off the clock. The pass too far in front of Dylan Bell. It's fourth and ten, but the field goal is still a two score game midway through the fourth quarter. So Kirby's leaving the offense on. Big miss there to make fourth down a little more manageable. And now you have the best corner coming back on the field. But I agree with the decision to go for it here. Third, the fourth and 12, fourth and 10 here. Still looking in the direction of Arian Smith. Big third downs. He's been their go-to guy. Big third down conversion against Florida and Texas earlier this year. Play of the year on defense for Ole Miss. Fourth down and 10. Back. Deflected and intercepted. John Saunders picks it up. And slides down at the 25. Tough to tell from here if it was tipped or not, but it was 
certainly a flutter ball. Ivy, we think, got a hand on it. And Ivy does a great job here. Watch his eyes. He doesn't get home. He's looking at it. He's watching the whole way. So he goes skyward at six foot six. He tips it. And it allows John Saunders to intercept it in the back end. And Ole Miss's defense stands tall. Highest ranked home win against Alabama here in 2014, and that's now 12 interceptions in the last six games for Carson Beck. The most in a six game stretch since Matt Corral for the Ole Miss Rebels, who's here today. Saw him on the sideline before the game, threw 13 in a six game stretch. You can be a good quarterback and do that. Here's Watkins with all kinds of running room. Taken down by the freshman K.J. Bolden. 19 more on the completion to an emerging star, Jordan Watkins. Dart play fake, trying to get it to Watkins. He put his hands up as if saying being held. Lane Kiffin swayed by that, goes running down the sideline to argue with one of the officials. It was Dale and Everett who had the coverage. Trying to kind of sneak one there is Georgia. Have a lot of guys up around the line of scrimmage, anticipating run. Lane Kiffin says, if we got one-on-ones, we trust our quarterback, we'll take a shot. And might have gotten away with one there against Glenn Schumann's defense. Watkins lines up in the backfield and then goes in motion. Jackson Dart pulls it down and runs. And he's still running. Jackson Dart banged out of bounds by K.J. Bolden. You'd never know he left very early with a left ankle injury. And they're trying to do a bunch of movement up front defensively, but Jackson Dart sees it, and he sees the, the Red Sea part, and he's out the gate. Just a great job by Jackson Dart, recognizing that they were not sound in their pass rush. Seeing a lot of space up front and then taking off. That's just a veteran play by the quarterback. 28-yard run, the eighth play of 20-plus for Ole Miss today. And Jackson Dart. Dominic Thomas ahead for about eight. Georgia had only given up 23 plays on defense of 20 plus. They got up eight in one game today. You don't usually get it in big chunks against Kirby Smart's defense. No, I mean, this is, this goes to show you, they have not been able to affect Jackson Dart at all. Outside of the early ankle injury, they haven't been able to apply consistent pressure. They haven't been able to get home. And as a result, what many have thought, the vulnerability of this defense, their secondary, they've been picked apart the tune of 263 yards through the air. It's up to 248 total yards of offense. There's Dominique Thomas again. Gives him a first and goal inside the 10. He didn't arrive until the summer. Here he is on the field in a huge spot. He gets the call again. They just want him to hang on to the ball as much as anything else. They're trying to rip it out. Starks leading the way on the tackle for the Georgia defense. One timeout left for Kirby Smart, Smart and the Bulldogs. The last quarterback for Georgia to throw 12 interceptions in a six game span. Carson Beck's offensive coordinator, Mike Bobo. Back in 1996. We talked to Mike Bobo, we talked to Kirby Smart yesterday, and despite the fact Beck hasn't played up to the expectation level for me, Kirby said, I wouldn't trade him for any other quarterback in the country. He said, you might hear complaints about him, but you won't hear them from me. And with the game on the line, I mean, Beck has delivered. Unfortunately, I'm not sure he's going to have much of an opportunity down two scores here in a moment. Geese now lined up at tight end on the left end of the line. Jackson Dart. Conservative play call there. They want to make Georgia use its last timeout. They'll still have the two-minute stoppage. 
And what do you do here? Do you kick a field goal and make it a 15-point game, but still two scores and a chance for Georgia? Or to go for the touchdown of the knockout punch? If it were on the one or the two-yard line, J.J. McGee's QB power, end of story. But with it being on the seven-yard line, I kicked the field goal. 15 points with how your defense has played all game long and with how you've rushed the passer at times in this game feels like a very comfortable lead. So I would kick it here, secure it, and then I would start thinking about how do I rush the quarterback and end this game with a big strip sack. Well, the analytics say to kick it. And Caden Davis has already made three field goals. Trying to make it a 15-point game. Charlie Pollock, the holder. He's made from 23, 43, and 53 today. This is a 24-yarder. Georgia desperately needs a block. It's good. And the lead grows to 15. Lane Kiffin on the verge of his biggest win as a college football head coach in his 13 seasons on the sidelines. That was a really good drive by Jackson Dart and Lane Kiffin's offense. I mean, just methodical, taking a lot of time off the clock. It results in three points, which is big points at this point just to extend that lead. But taking the four minutes off was really terrific. And now Carson back, back against the wall, having to manufacture an awful lot in weather and wet conditions with an offensive line that has really had a lot of challenges tonight with this Ole Miss defensive front. Outstanding Ole Miss defense. They've been tenacious all night. A little earlier in the third quarter, they forced the fumble that really kills a drive for Georgia. And then a little later, fourth and ten, Ivy at six foot six drops back underneath. Knows he can't get home with the pass rush. Goes skyward, tips the ball, and it ends up in John Saunders' hands a little while later. Just a terrific second half performance. It really the whole game, but now they can put this thing on ice. And they're two pass rushers, Terrence Perkins and number one, Prince Uman Miel, number four at the bottom and number one at the top. They can end this game with a sack. And Arian Smith lost the ball. They're really in an incomplete pass. And George has come apart. Their last two possessions ended in turnovers. And they took more than 12 minutes off the clock on those two drives. And no gloves, as you can see from Arian Smith, because of just how wet it is. They take the gloves off, hands a little better, but clearly the ball slick affecting how well they can reel it in. And they're getting it out quick like that goes to show you how much they respect this pass rush. Consecutive turnover to end a Georgia drive. They didn't commit a turnover in the first three games. In those three, back through seven touchdown passes without a pick. Dominic Thomas called upon. Just want to hang on to the football. Ty Ingram Dawkins made the tackle. So difficult to beat the Georgia Bulldogs. They are so good. 
But if you look at their last five losses, dating back to 2020, they were minus 10 in the turnover margin. That's you, usually what gets you beat. And then when, you're, when you have a talent advantage over just about everybody you play, you almost have to kind of screw it up to allow other teams to be in it. And that's been a huge story tonight. Now, Ole Miss deserves all the credit in the world stripping the ball and playing the way they've played. But, man, the big turnovers by Georgia has them in this massive hole. They're out of timeouts. They'll get the two-minute stoppage. Thomas stopped by C.J. Allen. They won't have to snap it again before the two-minute stoppage. Lane Kiffin rebuilt his team after they got shelled. They won 11 games last year. They got hammered in Athens. He said, yeah, we had a good year. We won a lot of close games, but we knew we weren't good enough to compete with the Georgias of the world. 26 players here in the transfer portal. Many of them key factors here tonight. Two minutes to go in front of a record crowd in Oxford about to watch a historic Ole Miss win. The one could easily be knocked out with the loss there tonight. Seems like an elimination game. Two minutes to go here. George out of timeouts. Ole Miss third down and seven at the Bulldogs 16, leading by 15 points. Dominique Thomas. Do you kick one more field goal? <laughs> yeah. Yes, kick the field goal here, but I would obviously exhaust all the time off the clock as humanly possible, but the field goal here makes it a 18-point game and would essentially do it. Very little doubt about the outcome. This would definitely seal it. They get a three-score game and Davis a career five made field goals. He made four at LSU in their loss earlier this season. The school record is six by Jonathan Nichols. So he's going to come up one shy of that. 1-11 to go. Ole Miss leading 28 to 10. What a transformation too. And Lane Kiffin deserves so much credit, recognizing where they were flawed and what they needed to do to get up to the level of playing against the Alabamas and the Georgias of the world by reinforcing their offensive and the defensive lines and committing to being more balanced as opposed to just winning track meets and winning games. Now their defense can win them games, and they did so tonight with a tremendous 10-point affair. You know who else deserves a lot of credit? The people gave money to the Grove Initiative <laughs> because it cost a lot of money, reportedly about $10 million in NIL to put this team together. Scoreboard and the PA announcer have been asking the fans to stay off the field. That's not going to happen. It's going to be the highest ranked home win in school history. Caden Davis, what a night he's had. Looked like to a lot of people. There was talk about ESPN.com today, a Texas Georgia. who are heading toward that in the SEC title game. As a great man might say, not so fast, my friend. <laughs> but now there'll be four one-loss teams with Georgia about to take its second conference loss. Texas already won earlier today. Tennessee's about to get in action at home tonight against Mississippi State. Texas A&M is off. And LSU, the other one lost team, about to host Alabama. It is wide open with an eye toward the conference championship game in Atlanta. Beck, out of bounds, Arian Smith. You just have to wonder, too, for Ole Miss, and what could have been as Lane Kiffin and the SEC standings Probably going to keep them out of the SEC championship game, their first trip, with just two losses. But Georgia, with their second loss, that SEC title game is going to get real, real crazy here down the stretch. And in Texas, A&M and Texas renewing their rivalry at the end of the regular season. That looms as huge. Back is stripped again. Jared Ivey again. And it was recovered by Xavier Truss. Kind of feels like an appropriate ending to this one. Just a relentless pursuit of Carson Beck all night long. And the offensive line now 
for Georgia. Long considered a massive strength. They got massive question marks with an elite pass rush coming to Athens next week with Tennessee. So Georgia will lose to somebody other than Alabama for the first time since November 7th of 2020 when they lost to Florida. 30 seconds to go. That one batted down by Ivy. And we talk now about, you know, the picture nowhere near as bright for Georgia going forward. The game next week is huge. Carson Beck and this offense needs to get better. Yeah. They got major problems. And it's not just everyone's talked about Carson Beck's interceptions, but they need to look at the receiver play and the drops and the inconsistencies with routes and the inability to separate downfield. And then, to make matters worse, the inconsistencies on the offensive line. Because well, if you can't block people in this league, you got major I issues. would argue with that a little bit. I mean, it got ugly here late, but you know, they came into tonight having given up 10 sacks all year. Beck was pressured only 20% of his dropbacks all year entering tonight, the third lowest in the country. So, adding to the indignity of delaying game here. So, I think Kirby Smart can see, hey, you know, it's not Brock Bowers, it's not Labakongi. Those were two great players who yeah. were excelling in the NFL. And when the quarterback loses guys like that, you knew in every situation Brock Bowers was going to be open. You could hand the ball off to Brock Bowers <laughs> if you wanted to. Lad McConkie was going to be open. He doesn't have that same belief and trust in these other guys. They have a lot of good players, but they don't have those kind of guys that you can depend on in those situations. And that'll be something to watch because the expectation of Georgia is to be in the mix for a national championship. And right now, the way this team is playing, they're storming the field. The game's not over. The referee, Jeff Heaser, telling the fans to get off. Be smart will not be vacationing in Oxford. Lane Kiffin not happy about this development. Kirby's first career loss back in 2016. George's last trip to Ole Miss was here. And it was and remains the biggest loss of his career. And now they lose to Ole Miss for just the second time in the last 13 meetings, both here in Oxford. And uh, they're trying to get the fans off the field. And Mike Swanson, our statistician, makes a great point. You can't forget what Austin Simmons did in this game. Yes. It was Georgia with a takeaway and interception on the first possession for Ole Miss. Georgia scored a touchdown on a very short field. Dart had to leave after the interception with what looked to be a pretty significant ankle injury. Austin Simmons came in, went five out of six, and led them on a touchdown drive. Yeah, just in a man, and their only touchdown drive in the first half. So Austin Simmons, he'll get a game ball tonight. Now, Jackson Dart and the defense will be the story, but you're 100% right, Sean, and the importance of your backup being ready at a moment's notice, and Austin Simmons delivered when they absolutely had to have it. And likely the quarterback of the future after a record-setting career here by Jackson Dart that's not over. The point he came in with everything going against Ole Miss to start the game, and he was as cool as one could be. And credit Charlie Weiss Jr. coaches the quarterbacks. He looked very well coached, very poised, very able to handle the tempo. They didn't slow down, even with the backup quarterback in the game. Charlie Weiss Jr. got some criticism. They went a little bit of a lull on offense that Ole Miss. They had four straight games. They didn't score more than 27 points for the 63 last week. And this is one of the great offenses in college football now, coupled with a great defense. And they're still alive with an eye toward the college football playoff. Lane Kiffin has his biggest win. Ole Miss has its first home win against an AP top two team ever. And just their second all time in 26 games against the top two home or away. And right now Lane just wants to get off the field.
And Greg, they have a lot more work to do. Both of these teams now get in the playoff. But if Ole Miss gets in, <laughs> there it's the old, that's the team nobody wants to play. There's a Molly McGrath with Lane Kiffin. Coach, I finally caught you. The fans with a little premature rushing of the field, but the highest ranked home win in school history. They have a lot to be excited about. What did it take to get this win? Proud for our players, our fans. You know, they put a lot into this season. We screwed up two games, so really pleased the way they played today. Really clean game against the best team in the country that hadn't lost for 51 games. Except Alabama, so just really happy for our fans and thank God for our players and the way they came back from the university this year. You told us Georgia is the best team in the country. You forced three consecutive turnovers to end the game. How did your defense control this one all day? Yeah, I mean, we won. Georgia, you know, Lane said they've been the best program, and they have been for the last few years. I don't think they're the best team in the country anymore. Yeah, they have some flaws, and they have a lot of talent, but they need to improve drastically down the stretch if they're going to make a run here in the postseason. They have a huge one next Saturday night at home on ABC against Tennessee, but still to come tonight, Alabama at LSU. Don't go anywhere. Final score tonight here in Oxford, Ole Miss 28, Georgia 10. For Molly McGrath, Greg McElroy, our great crew led by Phil Dean and Scott Johnson, Sean McDonough. Good night from Oxford. Let's send you back to the studio.